for the worst and hope and live for the best. You've heard of this English proverb, I'm sure, sometime in your life. Some people may think this is a negative way to approach life, but I don't feel that being prepared or anything pertaining to being prepared is a negative way of approaching life. I feel that's just part of being wise, <laughs> being intelligent. Because the things we're going to talk about today, they are not about if they might happen, it is truly when they might happen. So what is being prepared? Being prepared is being equipped with the proper knowledge as well as supplies in the event that some emergency or disaster occurs. <coughs> What's silly about that? What are some of the disasters that we may face? I know in the news because information is brought to us in so many ways, so easily from about our entire planet, we've all heard, even in our country, of hurricanes of tornadoes, of earthquakes. We've had quite a few in Reno ourselves. I believe about five years ago when I was first visiting Reno doing seminars here. I was here one summer and I think you must have had a few hundred or at least, you know, all throughout the valley. So we have earthquakes, we have floods, we have wildfires, we have home fires, we have ice storms and blackouts, don't we? My husband said, Elizabeth, be sure to mention zombie apocalypse, <laughs> because we know that might possibly coming too. We also, unfortunately, are concerned about terrorist attacks in the form of biological or chemical warfare or even explosive warfares, as we remember not too far ago at 9-11. There are many different things that could happen. There are pandemics also that we have been warned about being prepared for. And most recently with our government problems, sometimes we worry about economic collapse. So for all of these different types of events, it doesn't hurt to be prepared for the worst. So why should we prepare? For one thing, if you are not, and any of those things that I mentioned, and others maybe that are going through your mind that I haven't even mentioned, when that emergency or disaster occurs, what might happen? If you are unprepared, usually we go into fear. Some of us may feel like just crawling into a fetal position. But when you are prepared for the worst, then, what happens? It almost becomes like an adventure because you can challenge yourself to see if all of the preparation you made in your mind as well as about yourself with your preparation materials, how you will use them. And so then, instead of becoming a part of the problem, you will be a part of the solution. There are several things that are very critical to being prepared for the worst. I have summed those into three absolute essentials. One being water, number two being food, and number three being a defensible position. The first thing that I'll talk to you about, even before I go into those three things, Individually, I would like to tell you about a 72-hour emergency kit. We all remember Katrina. So much of the disaster and the heartache and hardships that we heard people endure during that time could have been entirely eclipsed if they were prepared with something as simple as a 72-hour kit. This kit we can grab and run. And it has everything in it to help two people in this pack in particular be prepared for three days. The 
most important thing I've mentioned to you, water. In there, you have several of these packs of water. After that, you have important things like food that you can add the water to, lightweight foods and dinners and meals. You have emergency kits. You even have a saw, lightweight wire. You have shovels and fuel and many other things ready to go at a moment's notice. Now I mentioned water, number one. Do you know even to be prepared for, with water, you should have one gallon per person per day. And I would recommend that you try for at least 72 hours, if not for a minimum of two weeks. Then if I have triggered your curiosity, we are so fortunate to have the internet where you can go into more details in any of these, but until, <laughs> unless I run out of time, I want to let you know for those of you who are interested, I've given you some references of email sources and some of the basics for what I am talking about today. That would be your water, number one. Number two, food, non-perishables. I've told you how you can just carry this off in a moment. At home, I like having a variety of things because if we should be quarantined to our homes, for example, with a pandemic for a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, I have, besides having handy water ready to go, I have a large barrel of water to the side of my house. Now, I've just told all of you, my friends, about my preparation. My husband ends up saying, all right, when you have these types of things here, you also better have protection or the defensible position, right? Because all those who know people have preparation, if they don't have a defensible position, guess who's going to come visit and say, give me all your food, you know? So that's something to consider. One more thing, you might need to go and shoot your food like I'm portraying, not that we actually have lepers in our neighborhood, but you may have to do that, so this will help you be prepared. The great thing about all this suggestion is that it will not take you, it's not so difficult, it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of thought to be prepared for the worst, and then you can hope and live for the best.